So yesterday, with some excitement, I saw that there was a new uh, PBS documentary on Julius Caesar. And I, I know it's new because I know the, 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 the scholars on it are, are contemporary. Uh, and there was absolutely nothing new in it at all. Um, it's probably been put out now. They think they're very clever because of the, the associations between Caesar and Trump. And there are absolutely zero comparisons. <laughs> You know, I mean, just look it up. There's no possible comparison. Um, but the idea is that he is the archetypal uh, megalomaniac tyrant who, who, uh, because of the condition of the Roman Empire, decides to 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 take over. Um, and the evidence of this, or the 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 raison d'être of this kind of interpretation of the story is that um, the Republic was a marvelous thing. We know it was the most efficient killing machine. It was the first uh, long-term colonial venture uh, in the history. Of, I may be wrong on this, but, but you know, the Persians didn't last as long as neither did, neither did Alexander's Greeks. Anyway, huh, the good and the great of Rome, quote, says good old Tom Holland. Caesar had rebuked them, had refused to see them. There was a, a, a moment where Caesar has come back from Gaul and he's, uh, he's in super pays superpower mode and he refuses to see the members of the Senate. New biography of Caesar has been churned out by the BBC. New say I know, as old as they, the way we do the play. I have done the play several times. I've directed it and been in it, Mark Antony. But new in the sense of these well-paid aristopopulist sophists pleasing their own small crowd and the rest of us who might still be fascinated by stabbings to think we are getting the truths of human nature whispered at us in English accents. And oh, what a stroke of original genius. He looks and sounds Trumpish. <laughs> They do defeat themselves. The great and the good are not centurions or women, even farmers. They are Tom Hollands, aristocrats who make up a mar make up marvelous notions of good mannery. See their Marcus Aurelius quotes we might have had from a bored shepherd. At the time, they defeat themselves. Rome was in a crisis. Who was running it? The Senate. Who brought many captives home to Rome? Whose ransoms did the general coffers fill? Caesar. A woman intoned, Brutus was naturally ambitious and so did not challenge Caesar. This is a particularly useful moment. They are all ambitious shits. Caesar, just the most talented and, and the bravest. They were aristocrats. It typically had been, the Senate had been uh, between 300 and 600 members who were mostly from the aristocratic patrician classes, end quote. They were appointed for life by the consuls and censors. Consuls and censors were elected by the Centuriate Assembly, 193 of 100 men, each based on wealth and property. Ah, ha, ha. The Senate, by the time of Caesar, had become so corrupted by serving the interests of the elite that the empire was in big trouble. The working Roman average blocula had been replaced by much more profitable and plentiful slaves. The rich had gotten richer and the poor poorer. Does this sound familiar? I think the model for Caesar was Bernie Sanders, not Donald. Try that in your next production. Caesar, as I said, spurned Tom's good and great because they were failures. He had been successful everywhere, in battle, in politics. The whole army loved him, the people did. The thrice offered and refused crown is as good a referendum as you will hear this side of Brexit. Why did the people cheer? He put it by. Imagining the scene played by a man of such huge achievements as small vanity does not show an understanding of character. Academics speculating on Alexander's, Caesar's and Bonaparte's and is always a giggle. Well, he was ambitious, Brutus says, the most ambitious in the story and the most intellectual, Brutus. This tiny personality take on these huge figures of history really puts me off their offerings. Why does PBS have no dissenting story, voice, just a bunch of groupies all agreeing on how sexy Mick is? It is repugnant. Just as the community went at and has concluded on, on Castro, so here, 
They line up tightly with Batista against Che and Ho, people whose achievements of persuasion they can never hope to eclipse. And neatly they create of the roaring crowds the lumpen stupid they are so fond of, who they fear not because some will carjack, but the threat of the academic's raison d'etre, superiority. I could imagine a Caesar learning a lot uh, in those many years of war, born an aristocrat and now surrounded by the salts for years. Why did his disdain of the Senate, why would his disdain of the Senate be undeserved? Why a symptom of megalomania? We have not far to look. Once one has gotten over the embarrassment at the standard of pronouncement of our present clot of congressmen and women uh, on both sides, once this respect due to the office flags, disdain would be a gentle word to use. Not all, but so many on both sides. Was he anti-freedom, anti-democratic? If you think this community of dullards running an empire into the ground had the slightest acquaintance with anything at all associated with those terms, you are more Bill Buckley than I can handle with a straight face. Oh, Cicero, a moral prig, stoic, epicurean, and skeptic. What fun. Cato, quote, if Caesar was louche in his barely belted toga and exotic unguents, Cato was positively austere a prime hair shirt candidate with his bare feet, rustic diet, extreme exercise and strict sexual mores. It was most unusual for a Roman to make his wife the first woman he slept with, rather a model for academics. See the Catilinarian conspiracy where both were disgraceful, but on Tom's good and great team for sure.